What if you could build web and native apps from one code base without compromising what makes these platforms great? That means native views on iOS and Android and using the web standards on the web. Basically every approach today has its drawbacks. If you use Capacitor, you're gonna render your native application in a web view. If you use Flutter, you use a custom rendering engine like Skia or Impeller today. And even if you use React Native, you don't use the DOM standards from the web and use your own views and text elements. But a couple of weeks ago, Meta open sourced a new library called React Streak DOM. This is an experimental integration of React DOM and StyleX, we're gonna have to talk about that, that aims to improve and standardize the development of styled React components for web and native. And in this video, we're gonna explore what this package does, how we can use it, and what it might mean for the future of React Native, as well as the general future of React. But before that, a quick word on an event that you don't wanna miss. The fourth edition of the AppJS conference is coming up in May and you don't wanna miss miss this. Organized by Software Mansion and with the main partner Expo, this is the event for everyone focused on React Native. This is truly the best place to meet other React Native developers and talk to industry experts from Shopify, Meta, Microsoft and all these great companies. So from May 22 to 24, come to Krakow, get your ticket, their first workshops running on the previous day, great topics and afterwards on the second day, incredible lineup of speakers. I will be there personally as well, so if you want to meet me in person and shake some hands, go come to the FJS. And with the code GALAXIES10, you can also save 10% on your ticket, so go to fjs.co and grab your ticket and we'll meet in Krakow. Before we dive into React Strict DOM, a quick overview of where we're currently at and why this is actually big. So if you're using React Native, you are actually not using the React DOM that you're used to from the web. There's a different renderer and package from which we import things like view, text, or a scroll view and these core primitives help us to develop applications that feel truly native because these render to actual native controls on iOS and Android. Which in turn helps React Native to deliver this truly native feeling that tools like Capacitor and Flutter usually can't do. However, sometimes you also want a web output and in the past there was a package called React Native Web which was a first approach to helping React Native developers also ship web applications. I always found this quite funny because we came from the web to native and then we went from native back to web and there were certain drawbacks and flaws to that package. The interesting fact about this package is that React Native Web was started by Nicholas Gallagher in 2015 and during the development of Twitter's progressive web app. Keep that name in mind. There's a nice visual representation in one of the RFCs that describes the React Native API and how React Native Web plays a role in it. You can see the React Native API here as the layer and we're accessing stuff from React Native and React Native Web now helps us with this 70 kilobyte shim to somehow target the React DOM and produce something like an actual DOM in the end. At that time, that was an interesting thing for React Native. However, now Meta open sourced React Strict DOM, which basically takes a complete opposite stance to React Native Web. So React Native Web tried to bring React Native to the web and React Strict DOM tries to bring the web to React Native. And React Strict DOM builds on an old RFC that was opened by, you guessed it, Nicholas Gallagher, who is now working at Meta. So that means, and we will later see, that React Strict DOM is probably the successor to React Native Web. And it is basically a subset of existing web standards from the DOM to HTML to CSS. And all this is to say that there are different renderers for React application. On the web, you have React DOM, you had React Native, and now we probably have React Strict DOM. And by the way, if you want to learn more about the renderers and how everything comes together, Theo has a great video where he describes all of this in depth with some cool drawings, so go check that out, I will link it in the description. I know it's still super early for React Strict DOM, but I just want to show you how this looks and feels in real code, so let's do a quick demo. Alright, so the previous approach, as I've shown you before, looked like this, we had React Native and we had React Native Web with 70 kilobytes and we went to the DOM. Now, the different approach now looks like this. We got React Strom, uh, Strict DOM right in here. And then we have on both sides really small shims. So we got React Strict DOM to web and we got React Strict DOM to native on the other side. Uh, and both are just around 10 kilobytes or four kilobytes, which means 
on both sides we have a sh small shim in here that helps us to then go to the platform as we expected so on the web this helps us to finally arrive at the dom and here it helps us to arrive at react native and our beloved views text and image elements so let's see how this looks in code because you can actually try react streak dom you can simply install that library and of course i had to do this in a react native application so here's my react streak dom application isn't it impressive <laughs> Um, so what's going on here? Basically so far I haven't done a whole lot, but there is one thing you already noticed that we're now importing things like CSS and HTML from the React Streak DOM package. This is because this is only a subset of things you can do. It is a defined subset which actually helps big companies to limit what people can do. So this might be a good thing. To most of you, I'm pretty sure this will look horrible. Now let's put in a few things and how this could work. For example, you could now go ahead and put in an html.h1 as a header element and it renders in our view as an h1. Don't mind all the warnings because this is still very experimental. Um, you can check out the compatibility uh, layer. Where did I have that one? Uh, I definitely had the compat table somewhere. So here it is. Uh, React Native built-in support, polyfills. So it's using a whole lot of polyfills here, but at the same time, we're gonna see a lot of red crosses here and there. So there's a lot more work that has to be done to make this truly work. But I just wanted to give you a little feeling of what could be done. So you could now write your applications like this. Uh, you could put in things like a button and click that button to render an alert. And the cool thing is this is actually a native alert. So we're kind of using HTML to uh, write our page. So just, just imagine that this HTML dot doesn't exist. Um, maybe you could even like destructure this. Uh, I don't know if we could have like h1 equals HTML. Uh, and then we could use that instead. Uh, text rings. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably breaking everything that used to work. I don't know why this is. Yeah, I think this is a JSX problem now. Um, but just imagine that this could be possible in the future because this is still a super early version of what we're doing here. So maybe there's going to be some, some support for editors or something that uh, gets this away. And then it looks completely like web code. And the interesting thing to me is as well, that this is web code, basically, if you imagine the HTML wasn't here. But you could still combine this with what we got on React Native. So here I'm using the Expo Router to go to my details page. So everything on this page is using React Strict DOM and the React Strict DOM elements, but it's actually also using the stuff from React Native. So I really like this. And you can just continue this. We can throw in a little text area. It's all the same. It's all coming from HTML. And we can wrap this up and put in a little html.image and my image would render up here. So it definitely looks different to how React Native applications look today, but it's a lot closer to what web developers are used to. And if you compare, we got like uh, one and a half, two million NPM installed for React Native, but over 20 million for React. So that's like a 10x uh, amount of web developers using React and all these could benefit from um, React Streak DOM or whatever comes up in the future. So I'm really excited about what's going on. By the way, we're also importing CSS from React Streak DOM and this is using Re uh, Matters Style X solution. This is still not working super great on native as far as I know, so on, on our React Native applications, but it also looks quite similar to what we're used to as React Native developers with a stylesheet API. So you see, we're kind of combining the best from all worlds and trying to bring this under one hood. Web developers have to get used to writing CSS and styling like this. React Native developers might have to get more adapted to using the web elements. And in the end, we can all benefit because we can now write apps like this. And at the same time, we can still import our own views. So I had, for example, a galactic counter, which is using standard React Native. Now, this is probably breaking uh, a few things because on the web, this is going to be complicated now, but this just shows you can actually combine these things. So with my galactic counter, which is using standard view, text and button elements from React Native, I'm just importing this here in my React Strict DOM. 
No problem at all. I can just use it. It's the worst counter on earth, but still I can use it and it's using the platform primitives and uh, the native elements. So think what you want. And I think we're hitting in a very interesting direction here. All right, so that's a quick overview about what React Strict DOM means, what it is, how it looks, and what it might mean to the whole React world. I hope this gave you a glimpse and the insight into what's going on. And we just have to remember that this is unbelievable early days. So take everything with a grain of salt. And I know I've seen many people uh, with different opinions about this whole topic. So people against this usually said something like, oh no, not another abstraction. We hate Stylex. This breaks copy and paste from every UI designer because we have like HTML dot something. Um, and I certainly can see these points. However, on the other hand, this is clearly a spiritual successor to React Native Web approach from the other direction, as we said in the beginning. And I think this is really good news. It is a limited subset of APIs that is clearly defined that we can use that will help us to write one code for a component that can then run on the web and on native and also use the platform primitives render to a UI label or UI view on iOS and to whatever kind of view on Android and to an actual diff element on the web. So this truly delivers on the core React Native principle and I think that Meta is already using this in some places is a good sign for everyone uh, who's interested in this topic. So how do you feel about React Strict DOM? I assume it's looking horrible to you, but let me know in the comments what you think and where this will lead us. And also keep in mind, this is research. We are basically witnessing a, a doctor at a surgery just without the blood, but we can see into the internals and we're involved with the RFCs. So I feel this is really cool to witness and to explore what's going on in the ecosystem and where we're going. All right, don't forget to check out appjs.co, use code GALAXIES10 and book your ticket for the AppJS because I will be there. I want to see you there. I want to meet as many as possible of the 80,000 followers at the AppJS. So <laughs> fill out those slots and we're going to talk about React Native and have a lot of fun at that event. And also, if you want to learn more about universal apps with React Native, I did a video recently where I compared some approaches, including the T3 Turbo Stack from Theo, Tamagui, and what Expo could do. So check that video out for the best approach how you can currently, in 2024, develop universal apps with React. And I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.